Hey Mini Enthusiasts, how are you doing? Welcome back, I hope you're well and I hope you're having a great day. Today we're back on Project Bruce, more repairs on the seal. So I think this is probably the third video of replacing the seal on the off side of the car. Um, I'm actually now on to replacing the seal on the near side of the car as well. So the introduction is kind of after I filmed the video. So um, I've also done a bit of an unboxing, but I messed up the footage, so I don't have the unboxing footage. So I'll talk through with you what I've bought. So I placed a bit of an order with uh, Ball Motive Mini Spares, and I've got to say, absolutely fantastic service. I literally ordered it late one evening uh, online, probably about 11, half 11 at night, so they would have got the order the next morning and it turned up in the post the next day. Now the great thing about Ball Motif is they usually have offers on free delivery if you spend a certain amount of money um, and you can make that work to your advantage. So as I've mentioned before, when you're trying to do a budget restoration like this, it, you know, what you end up doing is just placing lots and lots of little orders. And the problem is you just build up postage costs. Each time you pay postage, it builds up. It ends up costing you a lot of money. Of course, when you're doing a no expenses spared restoration, it's very quick and easy just to sit there online and just keep adding parts to the basket. And obviously, when you don't worry about the money, you, you're able to order more parts in one go uh, and you, you know, effectively you're saving on the postage cost. The great thing about Ball Motive is if you spend a certain amount of money, they usually do free postage. So it's always worth just having a good think about what you might need in the future and looking at what offers they've got on at the time. So I'll just go through what I've got. So I had a bit of a spend up, like I said. I have a Magnum Repair Section heel board for the offside rear. Um, I don't, I don't think you can get Heritage Repair Sections, so this is a Magnum one. Just a note worth pointing out: it takes M8 fixing, so you might need to order a couple of bolts to go with it as well, uh, as opposed to the Imperial fixings, which are normally on the standard original panels. So um, yeah, heel board repair section. Great news is, I'll get into it in the next video, but it looks like the heel board on the other side is okay, but obviously I'm not gonna know till I get that far. And a bit of a hint as to what's coming up actually. So I have another uh, jacking point repair section. So this is the jacking point for the near side of the car. And I also have a complete inner seal. Um, so they do two types of inner seal. Again, this is a Magnum panel. Um, they do like a, I, I guess it's like a repair section inner seal that has the cutout for the cross member. But as you will see on the other side, very much the same as the off side of the car. The jacking point has corroded to the point that um, it's no good and the inner seal has corroded behind it. So I need to replace the inner seal and the jacking point. So I've just bought the whole panel there. Um, also, like I say, just trying to bump the order up a bit, because once you get over that sort of 100 pound parts threshold, you get free delivery, which is absolutely brilliant and it's quick. So I'm going to need a pair of teardrop mounts for the front when the front end comes off. So I've got them in advance. I have a two sets of ball joint repair kits for the front. Again, I don't know what condition they are, but if it's all coming apart at the front, for the cost of the repair kits for ball joints, you may as well do them. Uh, I have all four brake hoses, front and rear. I don't know the condition of the brake hoses on the car. They might be absolutely fine, but for the cost of a set of hoses, the ones on the car, and obviously these are rubber, rubber perish, it's a vital safety item, so you know why not just replace them? I've got a set of rear subframe bushes. These are the genuine bushes, as opposed to poly or, or sort of aftermarket harder type bushes. So they're the original ones. Uh, windscreen filleting strips. Um, you know, it's not essential, but the car just looks horrible with those ones on the, there at the moment, and they only cost a few quid. And obviously one of the next major jobs I'll be tackling is taking the rear subframe out. 
uh, I'll be replacing the rear subframe and I'm sure I might be doing a few other bits as well like the radius arm pins but I'm sure the handbrake cable will be no good and it's very very cheap for a handbrake cable so again it's just a case of not mucking around. So I must say massive massive thanks for Ball Motive Mini just for a really quick delivery. It's always packaged up perfectly okay. I don't get the same issues as I've had with other mini suppliers where you place an order, it's all out of stock and then you're just waiting on an order for weeks and weeks and weeks and they take your money at the point of order. Uh, no, every time I've ordered from Ball Motive, it's always been in stock, it's always turned up very quickly and been packaged very, very nicely. I must shout out as well, they also popped a note in there to say Happy Christmas. So Merry Christmas to you people at Ball Motive Minis as well. Um, so <clears throat> this obviously adds to the budget. So this is all about doing this for as cheap as possible, spending as little on parts and consumables so I can sell this car on at the end of it to a viewer or, or a subscriber. And like I say, I'll be selling this car for what it owes me. So we're keeping a close eye on the budget and I'm not including, my time is free. So someone's gonna get a very good deal at the end. So uh, that order from Ball Motive, all these bits here come to 124 pounds. I've got to add that onto the total. It's around about, I guess, around about two and a half thousand pounds, but I will work it out. And by magic, I will put the new total up there. So that is what the car owes me at the moment. I, I am keeping a track of hours, so I'll let you know how long I've spent on it at some point. Um, so yeah, let's just get into the next video. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. And uh, yeah, just once again, thank you very much, Ball Motive. If you want to use them, link in the description. I'm sure you won't be disappointed. Right then, welcome to the near side seal on Project Bruce. And this side, I didn't look at very well, but I can see it's got open flutes on it. So I think it could be the original seal or it's certainly an original type seal. It might have been replaced, but it's not an over seal. Um, it probably looks a little bit worse now than when I first looked at it. I really didn't look at this car too well when I bought it, did I? But like I say, it was so cheap. You know, what can you expect? So I have my corrosion assessment tool. I think we'll just go along here and uh, see how bad things are. I don't know how well it's gonna come out on camera, but I can clearly see there's patches welded there. There's a patch welded around the jacking point here. Uh, there's a patch at the front there. Um, there's, under, there's under seal or something really thick on here. So I don't know what it's gonna be hiding. No surprise really, but it's obviously quite a bit crusty there. Plenty of metal falling out. I, I don't mind the outer seal being rotten here. Oh dear, there goes the floor as well. <laughs> oh. So, let's not go. We could poke around all day long there, it's coming off for sure. That's a patch. It's just what else is being hidden by a thick undersealer. I have to try and scrape some of this off because it's going to be a pain. Well, that's quite surprising actually because you get back here and it don't look too bad. Well, I don't know, I it don't look too bad. <laughs> I think I need to scrape some of this um, sealer off first. It's horrible. It's horrible. Well, that's interesting. We've got a plug here. Ah. Is it a Z-Bart plug? Someone has uh, drilled a hole in there, maybe for the purpose of wax oil in it. Might be why it's not so bad at the back here. Problem is, as soon as you go forward, it just gets worse. 
Let's uh, just get the grinder out and cut it off, shall we? Well, from what I can see, this seal has never been replaced. It's had lots of lots of patches up the front here, um, but past sort of here, it's looking pretty good. Uh, this lip here, that definitely look doesn't look like it's it's been replaced in the past, um, and this here looks like they've drilled a hole to put wax oil in or cap it in wax or something like that which is uh, fantastic news and there's even an original plastic plug at the back here which goes in like the slinger bracket hole there we go I can't imagine someone would have fitted a replacement seal and put that back in so we're not we're not gonna faff around and replace half a seal or anything like that, but I do think this back bit is the original seal. Um, like I say, let's just get it off for the moment and then we'll see what lies beneath. I think you can immediately see things are uh, held on a bit better on this side. So what's the verdict? Let's start at the back. So at the back here, we still have the slinger bracket, which looks to be in pretty good condition. Like I thought, this has all been waxed inside here. This is all wax. So it's preserved pretty well. 
I managed to drill all the way through on a spot weld there, but that's not too much grief. Uh, I've already looked inside the back. I've checked the subframe bolts and they come out beautifully. I haven't lubricated them or anything. You can just see they're nice clean metal in there. Heel board doesn't look like it's been touched. And as you can see down here, it has been all waxed in the past, which has preserved this pretty well. As we go forward, it gets worse. So do you think it's better or worse than the other side? So we get down as far as the jacking point. Now I have, um, I've cut the jacking point out. It wasn't very good. And same problem as the other side, inside of the jacking point, it's just corroded through. Um, there's a few bodges I've noticed. So if we look up here, you see that, that is a lump of fiberglass. So someone's pugged up the inner doorstep. You can see there's a couple of holes there. So that doorstep, I'm glad one chish gave me more than one. I don't know whether it's the right side on this side, but it doesn't matter because I'll only be using the inner bit. Um, and then there is just more towards the front here on this side. So it's gonna want a bigger repair section actually. It's gonna want a repair section which goes pretty much, for, I guess from here, all the way to the front. You'll notice at the front, again, the slinger back bracket is still there. Um, I'll probably have to cut this out though to weld up behind it, but these are not structural at all. They are just there to, I think they're there to hold it onto the production lines. There's a couple of bolt holes that go up through there. Um, yeah, then they're, they're not really functional. Again, I will stick a jacking point back in. It's a very similar repair though. It's a bigger repair section here. So, uh, but the good news is, I don't know how well you can see on camera, but up the top of it is shiny metal. So up here is shiny metal, uh, which means rather than cutting the whole lot out, because if you imagine, if I cut the doorstep out, and then I cut a whacking great big section out there. Again, I'm gonna be in that situation where the car's just gonna fold in half. What I can actually do is probably cut about an inch below the doorstep, weld all this panel in, uh, get all that welded in um, before I then take the doorstep out, and then I'll take the doorstep out and then do the jacking point. So things ain't too bad this side. Certainly at the back here, it's in brilliant condition. Um, so yeah, do you know what? When you're trying to do a budget restoration like this, one of the things you can save money on is postage. And I really should have ordered two jacking points, shouldn't I? Um, Cause I'll order another jacking point now and I'll have to pay postage again. So, but it's hard to know what you're gonna need. If you just order it all up front, I'm sure you'll probably order some stuff you don't need. So there's the seal. Like I say, that is the original seal from what I can tell. Um, and yeah, it just gets progressively worse as you go towards the front. That's obviously the outside of it. If I turn it over and look on the inside, uh, again, we've got some bits here towards the front where they've overlapped the weld. So um, this has been overlapped on the outside. That you can see the weld lines there and they're just overlapped on the inside and of course that's just continued to rot away on the inside so again not great repairs uh, and then again as you get towards the back here you can see it's all waxed so yeah at some point um someone waxed that and that that seal's done pretty well to be honest i know it's been repaired a little bit and there's that plastic cap i was talking to you which goes in the back in the thread hole for the slinger bracket. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, I guess as to be expected this side, um, it could have been better, it could have been worse. That's the inner doorstep, which as I say, has been pugged up. They've put some fiberglass in there, but that's not the end of the world because to do that jacking point like the other side, I'm gonna have to take the doorstep out anyway. 
hopefully I should be able to unpick the spot welds along here it's probably not going to be easy as easy to get off as the other side because this is the original seal so it would have been held on much better I won't be able to just wiggle it off like I did the other side so um, yeah let's keep going the next big job I'm going to tackle is replacing this inner seal I'm not going to do the whole lot because from about here backwards it's absolutely fine and as I might have mentioned before I, you do run into problems doing a restoration on the floor like this as opposed to being on a jig where you know you can't you just can't cut huge chunks of metal out without affecting the structural integrity of the car so things like the doorstep need to come out um, the inner seal needs to come out if I take it all out in one go there'll be uh, nothing left to keep any strength in the car so kind of have to do it bit by bit uh, this inner seal I wasn't expecting that to be honest so when I looked at the car obviously this gaping great big hole here which I poked through was underneath all the sound deadening so yeah, I obviously hadn't seen that part. Aside from that, it's been patched at the front here. Um, it doesn't look like there's multiple layers there, although I will check that. Um, but the job for today, or the job in a minute, will be to cut this inner sill out. Um, because the sill is, the sort of the top inch of it is all good clean metal all the way along, I shall cut this line along here uh, back to where I need to get to. Uh, and I will cut that bit out and I'll cut along the floor. Obviously, if I just chop the whole lot out again, I'm gonna struggle with keeping the strength in the car, needing to brace it, all that sort of thing. But I think I'm gonna cut the line along here, keep what metal, good metal there is there, and get it in. So um, I'm just gonna get on with this. I'm not gonna time lapse it. Obviously, if you wanna watch the time lapses, go back and watch the previous videos but I will just give you regular progress updates as we go along. Right, so fast forward, I guess probably an hour and a half actually. That is the bit we've cut out of the inner sill. Um, as I say, I went up here to the point where I started finding clean metal again. You can see there, it's nice shiny metal. Um, and then I have cut out my repair section so that is a copy of that you'll see I've drilled the holes here because I've got to plug weld these holes where it goes through the cross member and we've got weld through primer on that inside there because that goes inside the box section um, to be honest that was probably well, I say probably it's an expensive way of doing that that inner seal cost me 18 quid I think um, no it might have been more than that 21.70 I think I'll get a little bit of discount but I could have just bought some sheet steel and folded it over to be honest although I won't get these dimples impressions in it so uh, yeah. um, on the car so that's all nicely cut out now and it's just ready for that new bit of metal to go in and that'll be the inner seal done. One big section rather than a couple of patches like it was on the other side, so it's a bit neater. Um, but it's very much a similar sort of repair as what was needed on the other side of the car. So I've just got to get that welded in now. Um, just for one of the subscribers asked me about the floor, if the floor burns, where you get weld spatter yes it does which is why i've got i've got a couple of old bits of board here um there's the old door skin under there metal skin um obviously this burns as well this is only wood but it just protects it a little bit um it doesn't it doesn't burn holes in the floor but you get burn marks on there which don't come out right let's get this welded in <laughs> 